Hi everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I'm going to do a full automotive engineers review of this 2025 Volvo XC90 T8. So this is a plug-in hybrid version, which makes sense because the world is moving toward hybrids and plug-in hybrids and maybe slowly moving toward full electric vehicle, but a lot of people still prefer plug-in hybrid versus fully electric. So this kind of makes sense in terms of the recipe. And I really like it a lot in terms of driving, in terms of comfort, in terms of refinement. For now, I'm gonna do the full engineer's audit and do the quality check of the um, exterior, also the interior. Take it for a drive and tell you a little bit more about this 2025 Volvo XC90. Let's go. Welcome back. So this Volvo XC90 is built in Sweden. Now keep in mind that Volvo is owned by a Chinese company, but this particular model is built in Europe. And therefore I'm kind of curious to see how good the quality is. Um, now also keep in mind that this is a 2025, but Volvo will be introducing a refreshed version as a 2025 and a half soon, where the grill and the interior has been changed somewhat. This one is still the 2025 pre-facelift version. Uh, but the quality is actually really good because the gap is only three millimeter there and also three millimeter here. And if you recall some of the reviews I've done on the Lexus models, for example, my favorite Lexus LC500 and also the GX models, uh, it's also three millimeters. So, so far so good. And surprisingly, it's also three millimeter here, 3.1 maybe. And here is 3.1 and back to about three millimeters. So the gaps are shockingly good in the sense that it's not just the fact that it's small as a three millimeter gap, but also it's very consistent and these edges line up really well. And even the charging port actually line up really well. Let me just quick take a quick look on the other side uh, to see if I noticed anything different. It's also three, actually it's 2.9 millimeters. The gap is narrower here. In fact, it's almost 2.5 millimeter here. So for some reason, the entire hood is a little bit shifted this way, uh, but still lines up. But it's one of the narrowest gap I've ever seen in a production car. And the color match is also good between the plastic portion and the metal portion. But there is a difference in color between the molding here and here because that runs along the bottom as well. But that's intentional. You can tell it is a different color. Um, but I do really like this light gray metallic color. Now let's measure the paint thickness and see what else I can find. Okay, so I have the usual paint thickness gauge to measure the total amount of paint above the sheet metal and you want it to be kind of between 100 to 150 microns in thickness. The thicker the better for durability reasons, but of course paint quality is more than just the thickness of the paint. But let's take a look at this particular model here. 119, so almost exactly what I would expect from a car like this, 108, so again, over 100, so it's acceptable. Maybe a couple more, 102. Usually the door panels are a little bit thinner, 105. So very consistent though, last one, 118. So it's all between 100 to 120, so it's give or take, it's about the same amount of paint thickness as pretty well every other luxury car that I've measured. Some of the newer non-premium cars have Paint thickness that's less than 100 microns. I would say that's too thin, but in this particular case, the paint thickness is perfect. The quality of paint is also really good. Other than I just noticed now, based on the reflection of light, that there is a bit of a difference in paint color between the plastic bumper here and the metal portion. But otherwise, really good paint job and the quality looks excellent. So definitely the overall quality for the exterior is right up there with some of the best I've seen from Lexus. Let's take a look inside to see if it uh, kind of meet or exceed my expectation. Okay, so now I'm inside the uh, Volvo XC90. I wish this was the refreshed version, it's not, but that's okay because it's more or less the same car. The newer model does have a larger screen and different uh, exterior finishes, but otherwise it's an identical model. Again, this is a plug-in hybrid model, so it does have both engine and electric motor, and it's good for about 36 miles or 58 kilometers. So pretty good, not outstanding, but actually near the top in terms of the range for plug-in hybrid. And the driving is extremely smooth, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, I also wanted to measure the um, interior uh, quietness. So I already measured the uh, decibels before I start anything and there was 38 decibels so now I have started the car 
and I'm going to just wait for it to settle down and measure the decibels again. There should be almost no difference because the engine is actually not running. And I'll turn off the fan to make sure that um, it doesn't affect the sound level. Let's take a look. So 39, so it just went up by one decibel due to the sound of the electronics uh, coming on, such as the infotainment system and so forth, but it's really, really quiet, at least when the vehicle stop. I'm not going to measure the decibels when the car is moving because there's too many variables once the car starts to move, um, but I just want to show you how quiet this car is due to a good sound deadening as well as just the type of blast they might use. Okay, now let's just take a quick look at the interior quality to see if it meets my expectation. You know, it's colder right now, so I'm wearing my gloves, but the stitching looks really good. There's a little bit off right here, but otherwise it carries on uh, perfectly well. I love the combination of this kind of vertical wood panels with the leather. And Volvo does a really good job of having this very light, airy feel. It's always being traditional Volvo. So the windows are pretty uh, big and I can see really well. This seal is not too high as well. And just the combination of the light leather with the dark leather is fantastic. Not too much um, piano black. There are some over here and over here as well. But generally speaking, the actual design and engineering looks fantastic. This car also has a beautiful Bowers and Wilkinson's uh, stereo system, which is fantastic. And about the only uh, complaint I have is the fact that not everything is buttons. So I do have some control here for radio and a little bit here for the defrosters, but everything else I have to go through in my uh, panel here. And while it's pretty quick and it's a Google-based system, uh, I still really wanted to just have some simple control for HVAC, which I just don't understand why more and more companies are eliminating them. It's not user-friendly and also it just makes it awkward. Thankfully, some of the car companies are realizing this and they're beginning to put more buttons back. So I hope that Volvo will do that. But otherwise, it's a very comfortable seat, and it's pretty roomy, and it's supposed to be SUV, but kind of looks a little bit more like a wagon, which is totally fine because Volvo is known for designing a really good wagon. So think of this as a tall wagon as opposed to a more of a traditional SUV that's high off the ground. This is definitely designed to be very much a city slash highway driving, not for off-roading driving. But now let's take it for a drive and let me tell you what I like or not like about this vehicle. Okay, so now I'm driving the Volvo XC90 plug-in hybrid and as you would expect from any plug-in hybrid, it's extremely quiet and refined because the engine hasn't started yet. Until such time that you run out of the battery capacity, then the engine will kick in and act as a hybrid. But right now it's still um, functioning as a full electric car, so it's very quiet. And as you would expect from Volvo, it feels airy, very safe as I mentioned to earlier. And those are some of the, the hallmark features of having a Volvo because it kind of makes you feel very comfortable driving it. It's also super refined, very comfortable suspension. So most passengers will enjoy being in this vehicle. But I will admit it's not a cheap car by any means. This particular model is almost $100,000 in Canadian funds. And even the base model is over $90,000 Canadian. So it is not a cheap vehicle and you have to kind of ask yourself whether you actually need a Volvo SUV that cost $100,000 uh, for plug-in hybrid because there's so many other choices. Uh, but uh, pricing aside, it is a high quality, well-made, very luxurious SUV that kind of drives more like a station wagon versus SUV. And that's actually a good thing because if you have a really tall SUV that is good on off-roads, then they tend to feel more tipsy and not as good around corners. And they're not quite as stable as something like this, which is more or less a station wagon with some tall housing and I think this is a good combination for Volvo because most of Volvo buyers are quite conservative and they're interested in comfort and smoothness more so than off-road capability. Uh, and the ride is exceptional as you can tell I'm driving over some bumpy road but I can hardly feel them and there's lots of large windows it kind of gives you this open safe feel which some uh, SUVs don't have. Some SUVs feel a little bit claustrophobic because they try to make windows smaller these days for stylistic reasons, but that's not the case with Volvo. As you, you expect in the Volvo, all the safety features are there uh, and the performance, while not exceptional, I think it's a good representative of what Volvo buyers might want from this vehicle. I would still recommend that you shop around because there's lots of choices in the $100,000 price range. 
and you might end up with a car that's uh, better matched to your needs or your requirement but if you always loved Volvo for what it stands which is security safety and reliability uh, and also comfort and luxury well this one won't disappoint you I think you should definitely buy the slightly updated refreshed version of the XC90 which is I think just called 25.5 because it does have some improvements uh, but other than that the 25 and a half and the 25 model I'm driving now are pretty well identical so there's lots to like about XT90 but it does have a lot of competitors in this price range and only you can tell what's best for you anyhow if you enjoyed my video please give me a thumbs up and make some comments and if you haven't done so yet would you kindly subscribe as well until next video I'm signing off for now thank you so much